Okay, so uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this crank. Um, so we're going to measure the main journals, and then we're going to measure the the uh, the uh, connecting rod journals as well. Um, so you're going to need a, I think it's you need a three three to four inch micrometer for the main journals, and for For the connecting rod journals, you are going to need a two to three inch caliper, or not caliper, but micrometer. Um, so I'll put a screenshot up of the maximum, maximum and minimum for the main journals and for the connecting rod journals, and I will circle them so you know where they're supposed to be. So when you check these, you're going to want to take four measurements of each journal. Um, so you're going to go on top, two on top, two on bottom, two on top, two on bottom. And you want to make sure they're all within the uh, spec that's supposed to be and with the outer round and maximum and minimum diameter. So you know whether you can use standard size bearings or if you have to get um, undersized or oversized, whichever way you want, whichever way they, they call them, I'm not exactly sure. So now the, these, these journals have a little... Um, not a taper, but a radius on the edges. So you don't want to measure in the radius. You want to measure in a little bit so you're not on the radius. You're on the flat spot of the journal. Um, for the, f the first one, you want to, you, you can you can line up with the bolt holes so you know kind of exactly what straight across is. So I kind of line up with the bolt holes. And get sort of down a little bit. And then use the thimble to, to uh, tighten it up a little bit. Um, you're gonna you're gonna kind of wiggle back and forth. You'll feel the high spot where it gets tight, and then you want to kind of tighten up on there. You don't want to you don't want to tighten it up over here and then force it this way because you'll just end up dragging it across. Um, I would recommend if you're going to do this and buy your own measuring devices, get good ones because this one is kind of a piece of crap, and I'm not impressed by it. And all it does is make me second guess all the measurements that I get. So you just kind of, kind of like wiggle it around so you get it centered and flat. And then uh, just go into your thimble clicks, tighten your lock, and then pull it off. And the measurement I'm getting is, you got three inches, so it starts at three. So three inches, 3.2, and then I got five, five, uh, five thousandths here. So 3.2, five thousandths plus 18. I think it's 18 ten thousands. Right? No. Plus 18 thousand. So you add the 18 to the 5. So it's 3.2. 3.26. Because 18 plus 5 is going to be 6. Well, it'll be 6 because it's 50. So 3.268. And then you go until you get where one of these lines up with the veneer scale here which is going to be looks like it's a zero so it's right on so you can measure it a couple of times so I got 3.216 or 3.2168 so I think the the maximum tolerance is 3.2 uh, 3.2 was 3.2168 or 3.268 Zero is what this measures as. Um, so the maximum is 3.2682, and the minimum is 3.2662. So, yeah, it's a little confusing the way I said it because I just mushed up my words all over the place, but basically, 
you've got four sections between the one and the two there. So it's going to be 25 thousandths of each one of them. So you're going to add these here on, uh, I don't know if this is a thimble, if that's a thimble, whichever one. Anyway, these numbers here, you're going to add these to this one. So if you've got one and then three, that's 75. And then the one eight, you would add the one eight to the 75. Um, until it comes all the way around. So keep in mind you're not on the next number or the next notch until you pass the zero. So even though I'm past the, the, the 50 thousandths here, is it 50 thousand? Yeah. No, three four. Yeah, even though I'm past the 50 thousandths here, I am actually not to the 75 until I get past the zero. So. Hope I confused you, because I probably did. I'll measure the next one down. I'll take a next measurement at the bottom. Make sure you're not on the radius. And just kind of feel around. You'll feel the high spot, because it'll get tight. And you don't want to be forcing it down any tighter. So you just kind of, just kind of go around until you feel the high spot where it gets tight there. And then kind of... Get right in the middle and wiggle it around and then go until that clicks. We'll pull it off and so I'm 3.2, It looks like we're at 2 here. 3.2682. So the first thing I did, um, just to verify this, because this you do, I do tend to second guess my measuring equipment because I only have the one of this size. So you get the you get the gauge here, and I I, I put the gauge in here, and then I I measure the gauge, and I was two ten thousandths over the three, so that that's the the, the error of this. So I, I took this also and I measured it with a veneer caliper also and I came up with pretty much exactly three. So I could have somewhat confidence, as confident as you can be using cheap tools, uh, that this is three inches. So this measured two ten thousandths over the three inches. So I know that I have an error of two ten thousandths on this. So... I know that whatever measurements I get, I need to subtract two ten thousandths from it. Unless I were to do all my measurements with this, and then I can compare. I can use this as a comparison gauge for everything else, but I mean, I can't measure my my uh, main bearings with this because it's an outside caliper. I would need an inside caliper, or you can use the telescoping gauges to measure your inside bearings and then compare it with this, and then you can figure your... Um, you can figure your tolerance, I guess, or your, uh, I can't think of the word. No, it's not thinking the error. It's, it's, um, it's like a gap, the gap, the clearance. Yeah. So you, you could use, you could do it that way to figure out your clearance for your bearings. Um, so I measure the two that way, right? So you're going to do the same thing this way. So you're going to take four measurements of each. And you could take multiple of those four just to verify that you have to get like an average. So you know that that's the, the number that you have. So you don't, you don't want to just take one because you might you might might be off a little bit. So when, when you're trying to find the center... You want to go up and down as well as back and forth because if if you're if you're cocked like this, it's going to be a bigger measurement. So you want to make sure you're centered, and you get like kind of all the slop out of it. So right about there. So the same thing, three point two. Uh, 3.268, 3.2683. So I'd end up subtracting 
two of that to get my actual number. So it would be 3.2681, which is within the tolerance <clears throat> that it needs to be. So like I said, you can measure here. You know, basically it'd be on top here, then on the bottom, then on top here, then on the bottom for all of your measurements. So I'm going to do the rest of them and I'm not going to make you watch me. Um, and then I will do the cam, or not the cam, but the connecting rod bearings as well in the same manner. So I would just be on the other side over here. So as it came into there, I'd take a measurement here and then here and then I would spin it. You would do it here and there. So you ha you could find if you have any out of round or any type of taper or anything, but you, you want to get basically a, the four measurements all around. So we'll do that for, for both of them. All right, so I've got two different types of connecting rods here. I have a common rail split cap connecting rod and I have a 12 valve machine cap connecting rod. Um, so I was going to replace the um, the common rail ones with the 12 valve ones because I guess these are a little bit stronger. They're more apt to bend than break. Because I mean, I, I, I gotta imagine that to get it so that you can split the cap like that. You gotta have it hardened so it's a little bit more brittle. Um, I guess, I mean, they're, I think these are, the common rail are stronger, but they're harder, I believe. So I think they can, they're more apt to break than to bend. Um, like like the, uh, the older ones, the machine ones are. Um, I'm not going for high horsepower or anything, so it's, it's not that big of an issue to me to use these. Um, so I went to measure the, uh, the set that I got here, and they're really close to the spec. They're pretty much right at the maximum. So unless I can find somebody that can change out the bushings, I'm not going to use these. Um, I ended up ordering a another uh, common rail connecting rod. I guess, I mean, I, I can keep these and maybe get them, maybe get the bushings changed out later and have them uh, as an extra set or sell them or something. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but being I'm not going high horsepower or anything, uh, these common rail ones should be just fine for me. So, um, <clears throat> So I took the dial bore gauge and I, I set it up to measure the the uh, pin bushings. I'm trying to find a measurement for it. So the the rod pin bore uh, or the connecting rod pin bore. Uh, the maximum diameter is 1.565 inches. The minimum diameter is 1.5765. No, 1.5756. So minimum is 1.5756, maximum is 1.5765. One so I set this up at 1.5765 and uh I measured these on the uh, the ones I intended on using, and we're we're just we're just under or right at the spec, or actually probably a little bit under. I don't know if I can get it in the shot. So so stick the dial bore gauge in there. You're gonna want to measure these in like a crisscross pattern on, on on the sides and on the front too. So you can see it's supposed to hit zero. Zero is the maximum. Anything plus zero, which we're right now we're under zero, so we're bigger. So anything plus zero would be um, on the other side of maximum, so it'd be going towards the minimum. So right right now we're over. We're over the spec there. Uh, 
so there's one section side there move to the other side so I got kind of center it but you can see we're we're pretty much right right under so I mean I don't really want to use these um, when I have the the uh, cylinders board I'll ask the guy just how close you have to be but so these are the 12 valve ones and these are the common rail ones so we'll go we'll measure these ones and you can see right there we're over so we're, we're probably at the minimum roughly so like I say you're gonna want to you'll want to check them uh, once one way here another over there and then turn them and check them here and then on the other side just to make sure they're all it's not like out of round or worn funny so let's see so we're about exactly Pretty much the same spot, maybe a little bit over a thousandth over. So, let's go back this way. So we're about a thousand. So we're about probably got a little bit of wear from on the on the long dimension as opposed to side to side. Because I mean that's where all the thrust is. Probably all the thrust is going to be at the bottom here most likely. So. That's how you're going to want to measure your pin bore. Um, you can measure the uh, uh, this end of the bore. What is this? The rod, rod bearing end. Um, let's see, I'll get you a spec for that. Um, I guess there's two ways you can measure. You can measure it with the bearing. Connecting rod bore bearings removed and connecting rod bore bearings installed. So let's say bearings removed. And it was a uh, minimum is 2.874 inches and maximum is 2.875 inches. So you got a 1000 tolerance. And uh, if you want to do with bearings installed, it's 2.719. Minimum and 2.720 maximum. So, I'm probably going to use the common rail ones instead of the 12 valve ones, and I'll see if I can have the bushings change. I mean, the bushings are only like $36 for a set of six, or maybe like 50, 50 something like that. They're not much. The problem is the they're not they're not flat. So to press them in, you have to have them in like a fixture, and then you have to press them in with like an angle an angled driver to get them in straight and then I, I believe you have to have them reamed to, to your size so that's kind of what what makes them difficult to get them replaced is the sizing them because I mean you have to I mean I'm sure it can be done it's just finding a place I can do it um, so I don't know if there's many places around here that do it. I have a hard time finding machine shops as it is. And finding people that do quality work is difficult too. And some people tell you they can do it and then they hand it back to you. And it's worse than when you started. So I have a hard time trusting people, especially without knowing. But anyway, so that's where I'm at with this at the moment. So yeah, so my crank's good. Uh, part of the reason I wanted to check these these uh, bushings here is that the bearings for the common rail and the bearings for the 12 valve or the older 24 valve are not the same bearings so if I order a rebuild kit I have to know which style I want to go with otherwise I'd have to buy new bearings because the I think it's the, the top bearing No, it's the bottom bearing. So the cap bearing is different. 
know if you can see in there, but you see how you, the notches are side by side here. They're, they're both on the same side. Well, on this one, they're on opposite sides. So the, the top bearing would work, but the bottom bearing would not work, or the cap bearing wouldn't work. So that is the difference between them. So that's why I want to measure them. To know which ones I need to order, because I think... Uh, the rebuild kit I'm looking at is, I think, $1,500. So it's it's kind of pricey. So you're going to want to know what you need to buy before you buy it. That way you can get what you need. So I took one of the pins from the pistons. I went to remeasure this. So this one, this one is like almost one and a half thousandths under the common rail one. But look at I don't know if you can see that. I can tell, but there's definitely play in there. So we got some got some wiggle. It just slips in pretty easy. We fall right out. I mean, I was supposed to. It's not supposed to be super tight, but. So here's the. Here's a common rail one. And you got basically no play in there. I mean, it's a tiny bit, but nothing like that one. So beware. I bought those off eBay. I think those, these connecting rods are cost me, I think, $215, $225 for those. And they were good, usable condition connecting rods. And they probably can be used. I don't know how many miles are on them. But I'm a little leery of putting them in with these bushings having the play that they have in them. So that's why I'm just going to go with the common rail ones. So, I mean, at this point in time, these are kind of just been a waste of money. Unless I can get these bushings replaced. So... I'll ask the guy when I go to have the uh, when I go to have the cylinder board if he can do it. I don't know if he can. He's he's not really a, a diesel machine guy or diesel engine guy. He's kind of does gas engines, but he has the ability to hone and bore the block. So I mean, I don't think that's got to be a diesel specific thing. It fits in his machine, so it should work. Anyway, so. That's uh, that's where we're at this point.